Thanks again for joining me here at ButNowMinistry.org. As we continue through our study, would you read someone else's mail and say it's for you? I know that's a silly question, and I know most of you would not. But unfortunately, most of Christianity does. Um, there are 66 books in your Bible, most of which are letters. And they are written to specific people. And what most of Christianity does, and I'm glad I'm not part of that most or majority, they take, and there's one website out there that says if you don't take a verse and apply it for today, you're disobedient to God. I mean, how absolutely absurd is that when God tells us clearly in his Bible, the King James Bible, which is the only Bible we have today in English, that we are to study to show ourselves approved unto God. So we become workmen that needeth not to be ashamed, and that we need to rightly divide the word of truth. And that's 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. So if you're just taking a Bible verse and applying it today, for today, um, there is no way you are studying. And like I had mentioned in some of my other um, my previous um, messages I was in a non-denominational church for eight years and we never ever had intense Bible study we never ever went through anything other than their own agenda we never went through it was always somebody else's study we never actually just studied the Bible for itself and came to our own conclusions because we are to be fully persuaded in our own mind, Romans 14, 5. Okay? There's no way you're going to be fully persuaded in your own mind if you're following an agenda. Okay? You need to study to show yourself approved unto God. Okay? So hopefully you're learning that through these lessons that when you understand the context, when you understand who God is talking to who, what is being said, and if the church, the body of Christ, fits in, then you'll have no problem studying your Bible to show yourself approved and to rightly divide it. Because there are a lot of tough verses in the Bible, and honestly, some of those tough verses, you're just going to have to leave them. You're just going to have to leave them alone, and you're just not going to be able to figure them out. Don't try to put other verses inside them. Don't conflate them, because that's just going to cause more confusion. Just take the plain, literal sense of the verse and leave it as it is. And if you don't understand it, then let God have the benefit of the doubt. Okay, don't go to some commentary and believe what he says. Or don't go to some pastor and believe what he says. Or don't go to some scholar and believe what he says. You have to be fully persuaded in your own mind that what God says is true. Romans chapter 3, verse 4. Okay, so this is part 3 of Would You Read Someone Else's Mail and Say It's For You? And at the end of part 2, we were talking about, in summary, um, how so many people think that Jesus Christ is their king today, and they don't take the scriptures literally. And clearly, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, written over Jesus Christ on the cross, it says that he's the king of the Jews, okay? And we know that we're in the dispensation of the grace of God, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 2, and we know that we are not under the law, we are under grace, and we know that there's no Israel today, they're fallen, they're diminished, they're asleep, that's Romans 9, 10, and 11, and we know that there is no Jew or Gentile today. That's Colossians chapter 3, Galatians chapter 3. Okay? So if Jesus is the king of the Jews, and there's no Israel, which is Jewish Israel, and there's no Jew or Gentile today, that means that Jesus is not the king today. So when we go to the dispensation of the grace of God, and... It says in there that Jesus Christ is our head and we are part of his body. That means, because we are in a different dispensation, that the Lord Jesus Christ is doing something different. He's playing a different role today. Okay, He's not playing the king 
Messiah role today. He's playing the head of the body role today, okay? Because we're in a different time. We're in a different dispensation. We're not in ages to come. We're not in time past, okay? In ages to come, that is when Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is going to be Israel's king, okay? Well, we're not there yet. Okay, hopefully you won't see that. Hopefully you believe in the gospel of the grace of God, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Christ died for your sin, was buried, and rose again. If you believe that gospel, Paul's my gospel, then you're saved. And you are going to meet the Lord in the air. Okay? And we're not going to be here when he's Israel's king here on the earth. We're going to be up in the heavenlies. That is, if you're saved today, okay? If you are not saved, if you don't believe in the gospel of the grace of God, if you're adding works to it, if you're trying to keep the law, or if you think you have to endure to the end, or maybe even think you might lose it, then I would have to say that you're probably not saved because if you mix works and grace then it is no more of grace. And if it's no more of grace, then that means the cross of Christ is made void. And then that means there is no way for you to be saved. Because the only way you are saved in this, the dispensation of the grace of God, is that Christ died for your sin, was buried, and rose again. It's not by works of righteousness, Titus chapter 3, verse 5. It's not by works of the law, Galatians chapter 2, 16. And it's not by works, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. It's a gift of God. Okay? And again, Romans eleven six 6 confirms that if it's by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Okay? It cannot be both in this, the dispensation of the grace of God. It's only both when you are under a covenant and you are Israel, okay? So today, we have a free gift that's without works. And I hope and pray that you trust that, that Christ died for your sin, was buried, and rose again. Because if you do, then you're saved, okay? And you're sealed until the day of redemption, Ephesians 1.13. You've been given all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, Ephesians 1.3. You have peace with God, Romans 5.1. You become a new creature, not born again, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. And Jesus Christ is not counting one trespass against you. Okay, so you don't have to pray Israel's prayer, um, the Our Father, anymore. Okay, because we're in a different dispensation. And because of what Christ did on the cross, you're forgiven, you're sealed, you have peace, you're a new creature. You have all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. And he's not counting one trespass against you. He reconciled the world to himself. He's not counting trespasses against anyone if they believe in what he did for them on the cross. Okay? So with all that being said, we're going to continue our study that... We believe the Bible literally. We believe we only have one Bible today in English, the King James Authorized Version. And we believe it's perfectly preserved without error. And we believe what the verse says is what God means. Okay? We don't conflate it. We don't mix other things with it. We don't mix law and grace. We don't mix God's prophetic program with God's mystery program. We keep those separate. But we understand that the Bible is all for us, but it's not all written to us. Okay? And hopefully um, you learn that as we go through these studies. So as we start up here in part three, um, God makes it clear that Jesus is a minister to the circumcision. That then would also exclude us. Okay? Sorry, Jesus was talking to Israel and Jews in the four Gospels, not us. And his own, Jewish Israel, received him not. Right? John 1.11. Could not be any clearer. It comes down to you again. Do you believe what God says or the majority? Majority of Christianity says Jesus Christ is their king. 
they disregard and they reject Paul's writings when Paul says that Jesus Christ is our head. Okay? Or they'll put them together. Oh, he's our king. He's our head. Um, today he's my king. Tomorrow he's my head. And they walk around with this um, conflation Christianity, which is not um, what the God of the Bible says. Okay? He says to keep those separate. And what happens then, it comes down again to you. Do you believe what God says or the majority? All because so many people think that Jesus is their king when God says otherwise does not make it right. Okay, the majority doesn't mean it's right. Okay, the majority, if you study church history, the majority thinks that we're building a kingdom today. That, all, that goes all the way back to the first century. That goes back to Constantine. That goes back to Origen. That goes back to um, um, gosh, I can't think of his name right now. I'm sorry. But Origen and Constant, Constantine thought the same thing. That we are to build a kingdom. We are to bring in the kingdom. And Jesus makes it very clear in John 18 that he didn't come that this um, earth is not his kingdom, that the kingdom is not of this earth. Jesus says it clearly and plainly. But everyone else believes the majority. Oh, Augustine is the other guy. Augustine actually wrote a book about bringing in the kingdom. And again, What people believe and what the Bible says are two different things. So now let's look at the Hebrew epistles. Hebrews is easy. It was written to Hebrews, right? Again, that would not be us, the church, which is his body. Okay? James was written to who? James 1.1 1, 1 says very clear, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. The twelve tribes scattered. That, again, would not be us. The church, which is his body. Okay, that's who we are. We are the body of Christ. We're not scattered. We're all members, one of another. Okay? This is for the 12 tribes scattered. It's clear. Now, what about Peter and John? Peter 1.1 1, 1 says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Peter wrote to the strangers scattered. That's not very clear, is it? John also doesn't make it clear in his intro of his books, too. So how can we clear it up? Who is Peter and John writing to? Well, our apostle Paul clears it up. Okay, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 9, he says, And when James, Cephas, and John, Cephas is another name for Peter, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, okay, and they unto the circumcision. Okay, so James, Peter, and John, just like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, are also ministers to the circumcision. Okay, Romans 15, 8 again confirms who Jesus is the minister of. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. And we also know that Jesus Christ's testimony is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation 19, 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Okay? Jesus Christ came to his own. He was a minister of the circumcision with James, Peter, and John to confirm prophecy. Never mystery. Never the church, the body of Christ. James, Peter, and John and the Lord Jesus Christ never preach the gospel of the grace of God. They never preach Paul's my gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. They never preach it because they were sent to the circumcision. Paul the apostle was sent to the heathen, to the uncircumcised, to the Gentiles. Okay? you got to remember in Galatians 2, 7, 
it says that Paul was given the gospel of the uncircumcision and Peter was given the gospel of the circumcision. Now some new translations say that Paul was given the gospel to the Gentiles and Peter was given the gospel of the circumcision. Well that's wrong because Paul took his gospel to the uncircumcision which was Israel there was uncircumcised Israel so that would not be Gentiles okay like it says in some of those new translations again there's two different Gospels and the new translations make it out to be one which is horribly wrong okay and that's just another clue okay that's why in the King James Version, the authorized version, God's perfectly preserved word, the word is uncircumcision because Gentiles were uncircumcised and there were Israelites that were uncircumcised. So that would cover that whole gambit. But in the new translations, okay, if you're not a Bible believer and you're just picking and choosing any translation, then you are going to be confused and you are going to believe the majority just like Augustine, just like Origen and Constantine with the kingdom, you're going to believe that there's only one gospel because that's what the majority thinks. But that is wrong because God's word tells you clearly that there's a gospel of the uncircumcision and there's a gospel of the circumcision. Okay? So you have to get that right too. You have to believe what your Bible says. James, Peter, John, and the Lord Jesus Christ preach the gospel of the kingdom. Paul, the apostle, only preached the gospel of the grace of God. You never hear Paul preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and you never hear James, Peter, and John, and the Lord Jesus Christ, preaching the gospel of the grace of God. Two separate ministries. Okay? So, I just wanted to clear some of that up. Kind of got off track there, but as we continue here, we can see clearly that Jesus, James, Peter, and John all minister to the circumcision, which is Israel, the Jews, under the law of covenant to fulfill Israel's prophecy to inherit the kingdom. Because you got to remember, the Old Testament, which is the law, was only given to Israel, and the New Testament, which is the law, was only given to Israel on the authority of Exodus chapter 19, Hebrews chapter 8, Jeremiah 31, and Ezekiel 36. Okay? So if you read the four Gospels and the Hebrew Epistles, which is from Hebrews to Revelation, and you put the church, the body of Christ, and yourself in those books, you violate the Scripture. You violate the integrity of the Scripture, righteousness, and God's clear instructions. Okay? You hold the Bible in unrighteousness when you do that. You go against Romans chapter 11, 6, where you mix law and grace. You go against Galatians chapter 2, verse 21, where you frustrate the grace of God and you make the cross of Christ void. You make the death of Christ in vain when you mix the two programs. Okay? According to God, the four Gospels are about Jesus Christ, the minister to Israel, his covenant people, to confirm the promises of the fathers. Jesus came only to his own, and they received him not. Jesus was born under the law. James, Peter, and John also wrote to the circumcision under the law to Israel about how they need to endure to the end to inherit the kingdom. Okay? Exodus 19.3 And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. Verse 5 Now therefore he will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant. Then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Verse 6 And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Again, Romans 14, 5. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Galatians 4, 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law. And Jeremiah 31, 31 says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It's never with the church, the body of Christ. 
Old and New Testament covenant was only given to Israel. Hebrews 8.8 8 also confirms, For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And verse 10, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Galatians 2.9, And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Paul confirms for us today that the law covenant program was interrupted by the dispensation of grace, by Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Today there is no law covenant, there is no Jew or Gentile, just the new creature. The law is just our schoolmaster tutor and nailed to the cross and we are at peace and liberty with God. Ephesians 3, two. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to me to you, Lord, Colossians 1.25, Wherefore I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Ephesians 3.9, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God who created all things by Jesus Christ. And Romans 16.25, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. And Ephesians 2.12, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Romans 6.14, for sin shall have not dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Colossians 3.11, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. And Galatians 3.28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus, right? Jesus Christ reconciled the world to himself, 2 Corinthians 5.16-21, through 21. okay? We are in the new creature today. And if you don't believe that, if you don't believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross, was buried and rose again, you're not going to be part of that new creature and you're going to go to hell. Okay? If you think praying the Lord's Prayer is going to get you forgiveness, I would have to say that you don't understand grace and you're not saved. Okay? Because he's not counting one trespass against you if you're in his body, if you are part of the new creature. Okay. Second Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Ephesians 4.24 And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Colossians 3.10 And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Galatians 3.25, but after that faith has come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. Galatians 3.13, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. And Colossians 2.14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And Romans 5.1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And Galatians 5.1, stand fast therefore in liberty, where Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. This is what Precept Austin says, and it could be probably one of the biggest lies most Christians fall into, fortune cookie theology. And I quote, Remember that no matter how much you know about Scripture, this is what Precept Austin says, Remember that no matter how much you know about Scripture, if you fail to apply what you've learned, God's Word will never benefit your life. In fact, it is better to live one verse of the Bible than to recite any entire chapter and live disobediently wow thank god for his word and his understanding of how i'm to read his word and it's not according to one verse
and applying it. It's according to 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Not like precept Austin, 1 Timothy 3.6. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, you fall into the condemnation of the devil. If you follow precept Austin, that is exactly what you're going to fall into. And if you tell them different, they're going to be lifted up with pride. Guaranteed. If I listen to Christian outfits like Precept Austin, I would be using my Bible in unrighteousness. Romans 1.18 For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. They use any translation, they take any verse out of context, they mix law and grace, and the scriptures become their own destruction because they are not Pauline. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 1 Timothy 3.6, Not a novice, left being lifted up with pride, you fall into the condemnation of the devil. Romans 11.6, And if by grace, then it is no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. 2 Peter 3.15, An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Verse 16, As also in all of Paul's epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, Maybe 2 Timothy 2.15 is hard for precept Austin to understand. Okay? Which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Okay? That's what happens when you don't understand Paul's epistles. Okay? When you don't understand what dispensation we are in. When you don't understand that Paul has his very own gospel that was given by Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. When you don't understand that we are in the mystery program. When you don't understand we are not to mix law and grace. When you don't understand it's not of works of righteousness. It's not of works of the law and it's not by any works. When you don't understand it's not about boasting. When you don't understand it's not of yourselves. When you don't understand that it's absolutely free. You don't, And when you don't understand that the gospel is simple. Remember, our job as ambassadors is to present Christ and Him crucified, to be Bible believers, and to walk in newness of life so we can teach faithful men to teach faithful men. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, Paul declares that it's the gospel. Verse 2, it's how you are saved. Verse 3, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And verse 4, that He was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Romans 5.10 For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. 2 Corinthians 5.20 Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Psalms 12.6 and 12.7 The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. 1 Timothy 2.4 Who will have all men to be saved and come to unto the knowledge of the truth. Verse 2 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Psalm 138.2, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Galatians 6.15 For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Romans 6.4 Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. And Romans 7, 6, But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit, and not in the oldness of the letter. 
So as we conclude this series of would you read someone's mail and say it's for you, hopefully you will not when you study your Bible. Hopefully you will not listen to Christian outfits that do not study, that take every verse out of context and say that verse is for themselves today and ultimately they use the Bible to their own destruction. Hopefully now you understand that the Old and New Testament was only given to Israel, that Jesus Christ only came for his own and he was only a minister to Israel, that James, Peter, and John are only ministers to Israel, that James, Peter, John, and the Lord Jesus Christ only preach the gospel of the kingdom, never the gospel of the grace of God, that the Apostle Paul only preached the gospel of the grace of God to the Gentiles, to uncircumcised Israel, to the heathen, okay? And that you understand that you cannot mix law and grace. You cannot mix Israel's program with the church, the body of Christ's program. And when you study your Bible, remember there are three applications to Scripture. There's the historical application, there's the spiritual ap application, and the doctrinal application. You can go to the Old Testament, you can go to Genesis, you can go to the New Testament, Hebrews through Revelation, Acts 1 through 8, to get definition, okay, to get historical truth, to get prophetic truth. You can go and get doctrinal truth. And then, like what most of Christianity does, is they take any verse of the Bible and they spiritualize it for themselves today. You can get spiritual truth from your Bible also, but make sure you understand who God is talking to, to who, what God is talking to about, what God is talking about, and if the church, the body of Christ, fits in. Then you can take the spiritual context out of it and apply it in your life, rightly divided. Pauline mid-acts dispensational of our King James authorized version and you will not rest the scriptures to your own destruction thanks again for listening hopefully you don't believe me hopefully you're fully persuaded in your own mind that you are studying your Bible rightly divided and that you have a King James authorized version all the other versions are not Bibles and if you disagree with me, then I would have to say that you haven't studied to show yourself approved unto God. Thanks again for listening. Email me at reckonyourselfdead at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks again.